so cool here. Not sure if you guys can hear this. Those are sandhill cranes. Very unique sound. Good morning, Jason here, Birchfield Family Farm, Oxford, Ohio. Good word today is from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. I've got a lot to talk about uh, today on the farm. I really want to touch on a question that we get fairly often here on the channel. And, uh, you know, we're a grazing channel primarily, but this time of year, not doing a whole lot of that. Um, and one of the questions we get a lot, can you milk St. Croix sheep? Let's talk about it. So dairy on the homestead uh, for us was one of these things that once you kind of get into it or try it it's like it's a whole new it's a whole new world it's a whole new universe that opens up in terms of um just farm fresh uh products healthy products i mean everything from we make butter to yogurt drink the milk straight uh cheese we've got a mozzarella cheese recipe great that put it on uh some sourdough pizza the wife makes oh phenomenal uh, but when you talk about dairy, um, it's really impossible to talk about farmstead or homestead dairy without talking about breeds of animals. And so I say all that to say, um, when asking this question about St. Croix sheep, can you milk them? Yes, you absolutely can. Yes, we've done it. <clears throat> That's kind of where our uh, dairy journey started, uh, was with the St. Croix sheep for us. I wanted low input animals. I wanted grass alone. So I don't want to be giving them grain, no other inputs. I wanted very, very, the lowest inputs we can, we can make, which pretty much is grass. That's what we have here. That's what we grow. You know, if you're wanting dairy, then, you know, just doing that, then having a dairy breed is probably the way to go. We do not have dairy breeds of animals here. Uh, these are just regular St. Croix and regular Red Devon cattle. And, you know, it, it is definitely enough for us, uh, for our family. So that, that is our primary goal with our homestead dairy is just to have that for uh, family consumption. So St. Croix sheep are an amazing, amazing breed of uh, sheep for the homestead. That is originally why we got into these sheep I wanted an animal that was very low maintenance, that I didn't have to worm. I don't want to be giving chemicals. Just low input ag that we could produce some, some meat off of straight grass. In talking about our dairy journey with them, I was getting uh, between 10 to 12 ounces per day per you. You, you kind of think through that and <clears throat> you have all <clears throat> the work to get them into that corral area you have all the work to get each one individually up on that stand so <clears throat> you begin to milk and their udder uh, is a decent size but the teats are very small and so it actually works better with a, a, a child uh, milking them so you really just don't get a whole lot of milk per animal and each time you're running them up you know you're milking them out and then 10 to 12 ounces you have to pull them down and uh, the reason I'm showing that is because that urinating defecating all that happens when you're up there on that stand so you have to stop you know get out of the way and then i would always uh obviously uh, put some water down and clean it after they do that you know pretty much each one that you put on the stand is going to do that some do that several times you can see what i'm getting at here is it possible can you milk saint Croix sheep you can it's a lot of work 
It's a lot of work for not a lot of milk. 10 to 12 ounces of ewe. Uh, we were doing, I don't know, six to eight ewes. So since then though, but that was a great starting point for us. And since then, uh, we that got us interested in uh, what it would take to work with our milk cow. And so we started asking questions about that and then moved over into the milk cow journey. And since we've done that, um, it really is like night and day uh, in terms of the time it takes, hey big boy, and not having to stop uh, to clean up, uh, much less time, you know, it's right now 15, 20 minutes of actual milk work at the stand or at the head gate with her. Um, and it's right now we're between a half gallon to a gallon. You know, going back to breeds as well, I think uh, I'm not making any kind of statement like milking sheep is not, you know, good or that nobody should do it. Or I'm not saying anything like that. It's just um, I think it depends heavily on breed. And so there are dairy breeds of, of sheep. We have we have no experience with those. I have no experience with dairy breeds of cattle either. Uh, I know that the milk cow that we have produces enough uh, for us and, you know, and more. And, and that's sufficient uh, for us and not a lot of time during the day in the morning for the routine. We do separate at night. Uh, and that was the same routine I was using for the sheep as well. Um, I will say this, sheep milk, the milk from the St. Croix is naturally homogenized, which means that cream is mixed in there with the milk. It does not separate. It is delicious. As far as um, milk, <clears throat> milk for drinking, I would much prefer the sheep milk, the St. Croix milk over uh, cow's milk for sure. Okay, so this is our little homemade milking staunch and stand thing here. Their head goes through here, um, put some hay, you know, in this little bucket. And then we've got this little, uh, kind of like a little lock thing, I guess, you know, that goes in here sets on there and then it keeps this from coming apart routed out um some places there so it's soft around their neck uh that was a little tricky getting those measurements right um this flips down here so you got a little ramp you can run them up um so it just kind of gets them up off the ground used a pallet there you know on the bottom put a uh, plywood board it's really really simple and this worked great. And since then, I do actually run them up here and I use this for hoof trimming. So it just gets them up and gets them elevated. I can get to those hooves quite a bit easier. Uh, but this has been, this has been a good build here. I did attach it to the fence. I just didn't want it going anywhere. Um, so this has worked out well um, for uh, the sheep and the work that we do on the sheep. When you start looking into uh, raw milk, uh, for your homestead dairy. For us, it was a little bit overwhelming. And I think the more discerning among us will be able to uh, sift through, you know, what's true and what's not. There's a lot of, there's just a lot of, we'll call it misinformation, but just, you can tell people that have uh, an agenda, right? Uh, trying to save their, uh, failing industrial system right now we all know <clears throat> that that is breaking it's breaking for producer and it's breaking for consumer but sorting through all of that can be a little bit overwhelming with any of our products we don't see disease um you know i've as a matter of fact it's much the opposite you know we've had several health ailments that have been i think have been remedied because of the fresh raw milk your body's able to handle it the nutrients are bioavailable whereas you heat up milk you pasteurize it and you end up killing enzymes um, and that's the living portion of that food and it's just curious to me you know we have people who are lactose intolerant who have consumed our milk and they don't have a reaction uh and you know it really it really doesn't stop there I, I, there's other experience too with you know, you want to talk about dairy, well, let's talk about wheat, right? And all of the gluten sensitivities, the gluten allergies. Well, somebody close to me uh, used to bake sourdough bread and she had uh, celiacs, 
people with celiac disease who obviously can't handle gluten uh, uh, and they were able to consume her bread without a reaction. Now we talked about eggs last time and uh, <clears throat> just today a friend sent me an article uh, you know, we've got this egg shortage going on, prices are through the roof, and one of the, the news networks is running an article cautioning everyone, cautioning everyone that, hey, um, you know, eggs can give you salmonella, you know, you can get salmonella, you know, before you start that backyard poultry flock, uh, you know, you better, <laughs> and you read down in the article, and they are also cautioning against kissing and cuddling your poultry. I'm not even kidding, whatever. But but these things, these things, the wheat, the dairy, the the eggs, you know, they get you asking questions like, huh, you know, why is it that, you know, this stuff off the homestead is, is all right to consume, but yet this stuff from the industrial machine is making everybody sick. It's so tempting to say, well, it's just all dairy, throw dairy out, throw wheat out, it's all wheat, wheat's bad, uh, dairy's bad, you know, eggs are bad, get rid of all that, and we're just gonna eat, you know, tofu all the time, or whatever, fill in the blank. But I, the conclusion that we're, I think that, that we're slowly coming to as a culture is that, hey, it's not the actual uh, thing, it's the how, it's how it's being produced. Didn't really mean to go off on that whole tangent. Uh, I uh, hope that I uh, answered some dairy questions. Yes, can you milk St. Croix? You absolutely can. Hey, maybe you're somebody uh, with a uh, sheep or a cow or goats, you know, and you've got dairy animals, you got some experience. Hey, weigh in here. Tell us about your experience. You know, let's, uh, let's learn from each other here. And uh, hope you guys are having a great day and uh, be blessed today. Take care.